that I was gonna stop. It doesn't stop. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name's Laurel. I'm the founder and owner of The Chili Cabin here in Ithaca, New York. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the first episode of Chili Out. This is going to be a twice monthly segment in which I feature a different chili each episode and I will give you a little bit of, of information about that chili, how hot it is, uh, how it's used in dishes, whether you know cooked or raw, and also uh, the origin, a little bit of information about the origin of that chili. Now I am an archaeologist by training, so the origins of foods and items and basically everything is very of interest to me, especially things that we still use today that were used in antiquity. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, if in, in most cases, give you a little bit of information about um, some old stuff. <laughs> anyway, today's episode is going to be featuring the habanero pepper. I picked these up from my lo local grocery store this morning. Uh, now it is habanero and not habanero as many Americans uh, do say, and I hear it all the time. Uh, you do have that you do have that little tilde accent, the little squiggly over the N on the jalapeno, which leads a lot of people to think that it's also habanero, but it's actually habanero. Uh, so that's your first lesson about habaneros for today. Uh, now they do range from about. Uh, 100,000 to 250,000 on the Scoville scale, if I recall correctly. <laughs> now this is really hot, guys. This is about 140 times hotter than a jalapeno. I'm already starting to get a little bit nervous here, because I'm not going to lie. I have never eaten a habanero whole by itself. I've had it in salsas. I've had it in different dishes. But I've never just eaten one. Uh, the Actually, I've never eaten any whole pepper. Um hotter than a jalapeno uh, so this is going to be a journey for both of us so I really hope that you'll stick around and probably watch me be in a lot of pain in a little bit uh, here we go okay so now before I actually touch these I'm gonna go ahead and glove up because in the past uh, even cutting jalapenos without gloves or touching ha handling jalapenos without gloves has been very regrettable for me and this being 140 times hotter than a jalapeno I'm not taking any chances uh, I'm also gonna go get like a few bottles of water because I just realized I don't have any milk I am lactose intolerant but I don't even have any lactate in the house so I guess it's just water for me today all right so I got a couple bottles of water this should do me good. I really hope I don't get the hiccups. I've seen a lot of people on these hot pepper videos get hiccups, and I've always wondered if that would happen to me, so we shall see. Anyway, um, so this right here is a beautiful example of a habanero. Now, generally, the mature ones are orange or red. Orange is more common, but it can be red. Typically, they are green when they are not mature, and then as they mature, they uh, develop into this orange or red color. Now, another similar kind of pepper to this is actually called the Scotch Bonnet. They are technically the same species, but uh, there's slight variation in flavor. They've been, they were, they came from the, the same species of pepper and have just separated out very so slightly. So the Scotch Bonnet and the uh, Habanero really can be used inter interchangeably. They both come in at about the same level on the Scoville scale, ranging somewhere between 100,000 and 500,000. It really depends on the maturity of the pepper and also whether or not it has seeds in it. I am gonna be going full seeds today. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat this thing. So I'm guessing I'm getting closer to the hotter end of that spectrum, near the 500,000 Scoville mark. Uh, again, getting really nervous about this. Never eaten anything this hot just by itself. I don't even have anybody in my house right now. My wife is at work, so if this goes wrong, uh, I guess you'll never see this. Now I'm going to start with by giving you guys a little bit of information about this, like I said. Now, generally speaking, uh, his or historically speaking, these originally came from the Amazon rainforest in South America, uh, frequently being found in Peru. Uh, but today, actually, the largest cultivator 
of the habanero pepper is the Yucatan Peninsula or uh, Mexico. Uh, now, it's this is very important in Mexican cuisine. You'll find it in all sorts of salsas and purees in its raw form. Now, how did these get to Mexico, do you ask? Basically, uh, when the Spanish came to South America, uh, they found these little puppies and they spread them all over. And so that's how they, these have gotten to other places such as Mexico. And now, you know, now we have them here in uh, the United States as well. But originally they were, uh, they, they, they were in South America in the Amazon region. Uh, there have been, as far as in antiquity, uh, it looks like these things have been eaten for at least 8,500 years because we have found, uh, and by we I just mean archaeologists, not me myself, archaeologists have found in uh, in Peru a preserved whole uh, habanero pepper dating back to 8,500 years ago, which is actually even older than the strata um, strata is just a fancy word for level in the dirt of uh, the strata where they find pot where they start finding pottery and signs of advanced civilization like that. So these things have really been eaten by humans uh, throughout throughout humanity. And that's something that's really cool to me. So I'm going to be experiencing the same thing right now, the same pain that someone 8,500 years ago probably experienced, not knowing what they were getting themselves into. Uh, hopefully they didn't eat the whole thing in one bite. I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to go halvesies. Although I'm afraid if I go halvesies, I might eat the first half and chicken out. So I think I might just bite this whole thing. Still really nervous. All right, so I think at this point, I've given you guys some information, and I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet, so to speak, and eat this thing. I can honestly, not even lying, I cracked it a little bit on the top here, and I can feel it coming through on my glove a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm, I'm a baby, so that's probably why I can feel it. But these things are no joke. So please do not try this at home unless you are ready to feel some pain. Here we go. I'm gonna open my water before I do this. All right. Whatever you do, do not touch your eyes or your face. And guys, if you ever handle a hot pepper, please, if you have to go to the bathroom, put gloves on, or wash your hands 15 times, but please do not go to the bathroom after handling hot peppers, guys. I've seen it happen to several of my guy friends, and none of them be seem to be having a great time. So I obviously personally can't attest to how much pain that causes, but I, I can only imagine. Cheers. Oh yeah, yep, there it goes. Holy I see why this was the world's hottest pepper until 1999. Honestly, by itself, it really doesn't taste that great. I really like jalapenos a lot, but holy sh I don't know if I can swallow this. I'm going to do it. Still chewing. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Holy f jeez.
Mm-hmm. All right. I see why this was considered the world's hottest pepper until 1999. It is not anymore. We have the... Hmm. I thought it was going to stop. It doesn't stop. Uh, now I have the ghost pepper, which is hotter. Oh, that actually... The Carolina Reaper. It's even hotter than that. I have a feeling I'm going to re regret this later. Oh, that's no joke, guys. I watch Hot Ones all the time. Shout out to Sean Evans. I thought you're ever going to see this video. If you ever do, props for what you do every day because my tongue is on fire. Oh, I hope I don't get an ulcer. Mmm. <laughs> Whoo! All right. Um. All gone. Oh, damn. It does not stop. I'm gonna get some honey. The lid's stuck on the honey jar. Can't get it off. All right, guys. Well, you saw me do it. I think you again. You can see me sweating. I'm gonna try not to touch my eyes or one of those again. But I am gonna keep working my way up to hotter peppers. So I guess I'm just gonna have to get used to this. I love chilies, usually in things, not by themselves. But this was kind of a cool adventure. I feel like I've accomplished something. Definitely burnt. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to go because I'm in a lot of pain. So I will see you guys next week with episode two of Cooking with the Chili Cabin. Not sure what I'm going to be cooking yet. I don't know if I could even tell you if I had planned something, if I'd even be able to remember it right now. But I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.